饭的故事，亮艳明月盼望，调转生活细看，动人拼搏，为力争错。Turkey, situated at the crossroads of Europe and Asia, has a history that spans thousands of years. From the mighty empires of the Hittites to the grandeur of the Ottoman Empire, Turkey's past is a tapestry woven with tales of conquest, trade, and artistic brilliance. Today, Turkey is a vibrant and dynamic country that seamlessly blends its historical heritage with contemporary influences. Nowadays, about 1,500 Turkish people live in Hong Kong. Most of them are Muslim. I come from Turkey. I came here from Egypt. I used to study and work in Egypt, and then I was working for some textile company. And later on, some relatives of mine and some their business partner they want to make some business in Hong Kong, and they asked me to guide them to Hong Kong. So I came here in 2004. March. That was my first time I stepped in Hong Kong, and I really like it. I mean, the environment, the system, everything was very good. So the third time I came here, 2004 on September, and on third time I decided that I will stay here. And then since then I'm living here. The reason I come here and how it starts here, it is totally different than my field that I used to work. I work for a textile company and electronics. But the thing is, when I was young, I was taking some art classes. When I met the guys who are running here, they are also say that okay, you have kind of background related with art, so you can stay with us. Why don't you think to work with us? But beside that, actually, the, before the Mosaic Art Studio, we are having a cultural center called Anatolia Cultural Center, and by that time, we are also supporting this、uh, cultural center, and it was an NGO. We are just like. Make the breach between the, between the people. We are not earning anything out of it. But later on, the you know the things and financial crisis or whatever. So the two young men, which is the founder of this place,、uh, they came with this idea. They said, okay, why don't we do that? Like we make this、uh, art things, and then we support the cultural center, plus we earn money. And then once we discussed with the friends, and it was I mean the feasible. So this is how we started. And then, the, because、uh, as I mentioned, it's not only the business; it is like making the bridge with the people, and then the、like、interact with the people. So then, the, I guess this is the best way to contact and, I mean, the, make the people come together. All right. So what we are going to do is actually, there are two pages in front of you. These are the basic Turkish mosaic patterns. Assuming that after you make your own design on the paper. Later on, with the help of the glue, you are going to transfer them one by one on the empty glass. And to have a better result, apply the glue only to the center of your first pattern. Start from the center, go up, and go on clockwise. Does the color white stand for anything? Yeah, the pureness. Pureness. Does glue have meaning? It means trust and loyalty. Yeah, they are all combined together.、Yeah. Each color has different meanings. So let's say the like the red represents the love, and then the yellow represents energy, and the green is the renewal. So then the, each color has different meaning. Beside that, every pattern also represents let's say the some different personality of the people. So then actually it's like kind of reflection of the personality. Even we speak different languages, we would still be able to understand each other's emotions or meaning towards colors. So I would say color is definitely a universal language. Even though we have a language barrier, we would still be able to use colors to be able to communicate with each other. If you look at them, some of them is in a good harmony and the shape. It is all good and settled personality. But then, the, if it is too much mixed, that means the conflict in personality. Yeah. <laughs> Right, and keep in mind that this glue will dry in like four to five minutes. Okay, so during that time you have to keep. Historic mosaics, actually, the now it is quietly famous around the world. It's like Ottoman lantern or Turkish mosaic. But then, 
Actually, the history of the mosaic, it has like 6,000 years history. Mosaic used to use during the Byzantine time or the Roman people, they also look like, even if you go to Europe, you will see in those old cathedral or churches. We are calling it Turkish mosaic land, but I have to admit that it is not only belongs to the Turks. It comes from some other nations as well, like the Romans and the Venetian people. Okay, this is Turkish tea. Really? Yes. About the cultural center, it is not only with the Turkish people. We also interact with the Hong Kong people and with any other nationalities as well. So this is why actually it's inspired from the mosaic, you know? If you look around, you will see that the mosaic lamps, they have like uh, hundreds of colors. And when they come together, they are very good looking. So we can get the people together regardless color or ethnicity or whatever and then that will make the difference and it will come out very nice picture so before we start to make the coffee let me i give you a brief introduction about the turkish coffee all right actually turkish coffee uh, is a turkey country we don't have any coffee plantations all right but the, what makes the turkish coffee different than the others it is the way that roasted, it is dark roasted. Well grind? Uh, yeah, it's like finely right. grinded. Yeah, yeah, finely grinded, yeah. And then the way that you cook, we will mix the water and the sugar, and then it will go on the fire, mm -hmm. and it should be cooked slowly, okay? And then the, there are three ways to offer the coffee. There is no sugar, middle sugar, and extra sugar. How would you like to have your coffee? I think I would like it middle sugar. Middle sugar is fine by me. I'll get the water from here. Even in normal cultures, if you want to talk to someone, they say, okay, let's grab some coffee, right? So then, because with the coffee, you will chit-chat more. So yeah, Turkish coffee one, we have more better understanding to each other and then the more cultural exchange, I can say. Actually, the, why we make it with the sand? Actually, first, it looks more fancy. And then the second thing, so you can go deeper. So the fire can affect the coffee equally and in one time because you have, it have to cook very slowly, right? So we don't sand it too much deep, but then we cover it with the sand. So then the, what happens generally, like when the boy and girl meet, they get married, okay? So then the boy's family goes to the girl's family to ask their blessing. Mm -hmm. So then the, there is a coffee ceremony just like this one, but of course they don't use these tools. So then the, the girl take the orders, and then it goes to the kitchen and make the coffee. And when she makes the coffee, yeah, you can see here, now the foam is occurring, right? Mm -hmm. So she has to keep that foam and not lose it. Because the boy's mom give pass or not according to the coffee. Mm. If the coffee is okay, then okay, this girl is marriable. But otherwise, even the mother that this doesn't like, she will say, oh, this girl even doesn't make how to make the coffee. There is no foam. How she can marry you and take care of yeah. you. So, so it's really they, important. Yes. For so coffee. if I was a girl, I will pass. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the second thing is it is not filtered coffee. We just put all the coffee into the pot and then we cook it together. So when we serve the coffee in the, those small coffee cups, we don't filter it. When you finish it, you will find some particulars are coming to your mouth. We offer the coffee with some Turkish delights. We don't have any co coffee plantations during the old time because the coffee came to the Turkey in almost like 15th century. It came from Yamun, you know, the Yemen. During that time, it was a, like the Turkish country was called the Ottoman Empire. So then the Yamun was the one of those countries that Ottoman has it. So then the, during the like inside trade, so then the, the coffee came to Turkey and then the Turkish people, this is how they met the coffee. But later on, when the Turkish country shrank and then their land became smaller, so in those places became out of it, but then we still have the same style to make the coffee. So, although I don't believe the whatever remaining at the bottom, yeah. some people make the fortune telling, okay? Oh. So what they do, they get the plate, put it on the top, uh -huh. make sure it is all blended again, <laughs> make it upside down, okay? And after that, they let it there and stay like 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So everything at the bottom will settle on the, on the plate. Mm -hmm. So later on, they just open the glass. 
and then they check the bottom of the cup. Oh. And then according to that shapes over there, they will tell you some fortune. Yeah, your future. Then, yeah, yeah, your future. In the future, yeah. yeah. Mr. Musa is a Muslim who follows the Islamic faith. He practices daily prayers and also enjoys going to public sports fields to socialize with local people. He attempts to integrate into Hong Kong society. I start to play with these guys like since 2004. Yeah, it's been almost like 19 to 20 years. So even most of them actually, I don't know their name, but then the, when they call me, they call me, hey, Turkish, come. But then some of them, we still keep in touch and then the, they play here. And I remember some of them, like they were kids, they used to come here. And then the, they grow up with, with their fathers and then the, the parents and we, we get old and then they're now getting younger. So then the, I guess this play is like, going generation to generations. I know Mr. Lam also like more than 10, 15 <laughs> years. Yeah. yeah. And actually he's a very old man, like almost 70 and then the, I am yeah. 47. Yeah. So then but we still keep playing. And then the good thing is that like after the game or in the middle of the game, uh, always they treat me and from time to time I treat them. So like the, they bring the drinks and then we drink together and cheer up. Our English is a company. From time to time, I understand, but then the problem is. He, he, his wife is uh, Chinese. Chinese yeah. yeah. He's a, a teacher. Body language, and then it's just like, <laughs> I, I, I got you the kind of stuff. My, he can speak Chinese. Usually, one week, we go to play every week. I used to join every week, but then the, once I move away, and then the, now this seldom I come here because I have to work on Sundays because of the, that cultural thing, and then mostly the people come on Sunday to our studio. So, but then the, when my office Sunday I come, I used to come every week, but then the, now I almost like maybe every month or once every six weeks when we played against each other, yeah, and he's the guy who guards me. In this restaurant kitchen, the dishes being cooked are Turkish cuisine. This is the first Turkish restaurant in Hong Kong. It's Turkish rice. Which one we use in uh, our restaurants? That is the brown rice and uh, white rice together mixed. We use the butter, salt and water. After then, we have to mix after cooking. Now we are ready to serve. After uh, the rice boiling, I add milk. After milk uh, boiling, I add sugar. I put one another cup starch and the yellow yolk, egg yolk, and mix again boiling. After I put this cup, I put this in tray. Close again, okay. This restaurant is run by two brothers from Turkey, and the turning point in the older brother's life began with a foreign love story. We come from Turkey, and I am already is 30 years this year. I come the first, and after the, a few years later, maybe five years later, I be asking the, my brother is coming to Hong Kong. Because I was in the Turkey, I was meet in the, the one girl from Hong Kong girl. And that's why we have the, the 1990, we meet in the Pamukkala tourism. I was in work in tourism. Uh, we was meet in there, starting the friendship. And after the second year, she's come back to again visit me. So I'm also the interesting about Hong Kong. And after we married in the Pamukkala, they doesn't know I was in the married. That was in the big surprise for us. For them to surprise, yes. Four months later, I came to Hong Kong for a visit. 
I was working in Hong Kong 1994, and after I was uh, 1997, I started my own business. That business for my Lingaria, Turkey, to I send to Turkey, and later of international starting everywhere. After I need for my own business going to growing up, I ask him to come to help me. So after that I come, well, I say all oh, different and business situation is good and place is uh, good, security, eh? but only the culture is different, food is different. For we have uh, so many clients and coming from uh, Muslim country, from Turkey, let's just say Arabic, and less, Europe. Uh, Europe, and they are very difficult to uh, eating place because food must be halal. And after the Mustafa for interesting for the restaurant. And I said, okay, but maybe we can just invest. After we starting, many clients, they are very happy. They are, we are also happy. I was starting 2007. Seven around, yeah, we start here. And we have so much busy that time about export and trading. And many clients visit us in Hong Kong. So we start searching what we can do. We have uh, some pop-up idea to open the, some small shop, Turkish food in Chim Sai Choi. Later on, all that is not enough. So we decide to open this one, first Turkish shop in Hong Kong. After the cooking, cutting the uh, chicken doner kebab. This is the, one of the main dishes also in Turkey. We call it the doner, but in Asia and Europe, they are calling the Turkish kebab. And we have three kinds of kebab, chicken, beef, and lamb. Now we have here just chicken and beef. We are the first Turkish restaurant in Hong Kong about the Turkish kebab. We buy chicken leg, night with hot sauce, and the morning, Plus, very good. Yeah, we have cut machine, yeah. I've asked cook it after 15 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, yeah, because this one, uh, you like this one? You can uh, also put it, with, if you need closer. quickly, you need a little bit more closer. Each time cutting, it's, it takes about 15 minutes to cook well. Uh, after we cut slice, uh, about one or two cm, then we have to cook, continue to cook again and again, until finish. This meat, which one I, I was told to you, we export from the Germany. Because why Germany, not Turkey? Because we have many, many Turkish people in Germany. Now kebab more famous in Europe and Germany, more than Turkey. This come from Turkey, but more famous in Europe now. Then that's why the taste and uh, process more quality and more tasty in the Germany and Europe. And uh, we see opportunity is the well. In Hong Kong also good for safe. And for us make happy. And that's we continue, we continue. Now I was 30 years finish it in Hong Kong. Ru is the well in Hong Kong. That's why I stay in the Hong Kong. Usually I will go so many countries for uh, traveling and business. And also I said sometime I want to open the new line for new area. I've been Vietnam, I've been Cambodia, I've been uh, Philippines, Thailand. But for me, I just think still in Hong Kong. Of course, first in Hong Kong is safe. What country is very important? What means safe? Safe is means Day and night, everywhere, every street, you can go. And crowded, opening, 24 hours after taxi. When you home, go down, already taxi waiting you, like your driver. Because normally, our dish is different than local Asian food. Asian, they like to try new things. First beginning, yeah, they maybe just few people try. Then they introduce their friend or we have many marketing. So understand this food is really different and good. So we gain again and again new customers. One of the famous dessert in Turkey, 
Baklava is my hometown, food hometown dessert. Because of the special inside, have the pistachio. Pistachio means in Chinese, hoisango. All the pistachio tree grows in my hometown. When I bring here, I think the local people will like, but for local people, it's so sweet. Well, we adjust also their taste. When we import to Hong Kong, 40% uh, less sugar. So that's why now also we are selling in Hong Kong very good. These two brothers not only manage a Turkish restaurant, but have also recently embarked on a groundbreaking venture by introducing halal food preparation methods and opening a Korean cuisine restaurant. This is mostly Korean restaurant, but no halal. When I came here after two years, I saw some of the shortage business. No any halal Korean. Many Muslim people cannot try Korean food because most the Korean food is on halal. A little bit difficult, but needs time because also authorizing people who has an Islamic center in Hong Kong, they have an authorizing and give you the license to preparing. It takes three to six months. Also, we have to prepare the kitchen, kitchenware or kitchen uh, products. And also, we need to find right supplier who give you to halal food. We don't have any pork. We don't use any pork or pork products. So it's hard to beginning to start because all the people know most the Korean food with the pork or pork soup. Instead of that uh, products, uh, lamb, because now uh, in in all the Korean food no lamb. Only we have lamb here. That is the really good result until now, and uh, our customer really happy. But still we have a Hong Kong and Asia customer. Also foreigner they are surprised. Oh, how can we halal Korean food here? They also surprised when they saw first time. Yeah, Hong Kong is a good place if you have a new idea and if you really want to start new things here and you have a really special idea, I ask them to come and try. Why not? Because we already did it Turkish first and halal Korean first in Hong Kong. That is our experience. So we can say to them, sure, welcome, and they can try their own idea. Own and special idea always useful in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm.